Good morning. In Revelation 22:12, Jesus speaks up in the midst of the vision that John is receiving, and in his words, he again confirms, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he's done. It's a reference to his judgment seat. A reminder that God created us, we will all give an account of our lives to him. And God gave us new life in Christ, so as believers, we'll all give an account of our spiritual lives to him as our Savior. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what we've done, whether good or bad. Now, to clarify, we have the complementary passage starting in verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 3. According to the grace of God which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. When anyone builds on this foundation, that is the foundation of grace, that we're not working to obtain our salvation, that's a gift. However, we are working to express our salvation, so we build, in this analogy, with gold, silver, and precious stones, or with wood, hay, and straw. And in the judgment seat of Christ, each one's work will become manifested, for the day of judgment will declare it because it will be revealed by fire, and fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Now think about the analogy. Gold, silver, and precious stones would remain in fire, but wood, hay, and straw will burn up. So following the analogy, if our life and works are fruitful, spirit-led service, that will be revealed and rewarded. But if our life and works are not fruitful, spirit-led service, that will be revealed and not rewarded. Continuing with verse 14. If what he has built survives, he will receive a reward. But if it is burned up, he will suffer loss. What does that mean? Keep reading. He himself will be saved, but only as if through the flames. In other words, he won't be rewarded for fruitless, faithless, living and serving. That person will make it into heaven and enjoy that reward, but other rewards, whatever they may be, will be lost, a mist, when that person chooses to walk in the flesh and not in the spirit, chooses to hide his talents and spiritual gifts rather than use them and invest them in kingdom service. Yeah, the knowledge of the judgment seat of Christ is intended to inspire us to faithful living and serving. And it does, doesn't it? Jesus said, For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he's done. Now let's go a little deeper. Those words, judgment seat, are one word in the Greek. The word is bima. Now that word was used to describe something very familiar to the readers of that day. In the large Olympic arenas of the early centuries, there was an elevated seat on which the judge of the contest sat. After the contests were over, the successful competitors would assemble before the bima to receive their rewards or crowns. Uh, the bima was not a legal bench where someone was condemned, rather it was the place of dispensing rewards to winners. Likewise, the judgment seat of Christ is not a legal bench pronouncing our innocence or guilt. Rather, our Christian life is likened to a race, and the divine judge is Jesus Christ. And after the race is over for all of us, he will gather every one of us before the bima for the purpose of examining our lives and service and dispensing the appropriate rewards. In 1 Corinthians 3.8, Paul writes, he who plants and he who waters are one, but each will receive his own reward according to his own 
labor. You see that? We're each rewarded according to the opportunities God gave us and how we were faithful with them. Not everyone will receive the same reward. Other patches, passages refer to this to motivate us. Uh, John wrote in 1 John 2, 28, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him in his coming. So let us live and serve in ways that assure our fullest reward for our deeds of faith. 1 Corinthians 4, 2, Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Near the end of his earthly life, Paul wrote, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, and now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do you long for his coming? Are you fighting the good fight of faith? Are you keeping the faith? Today, beloved, run well. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for saving us by your grace. And now by that grace, empower us to love you fully and serve you faithfully. May we bear much fruit, proving ourselves to be your disciples. Now, you continue. God bless you.